Hello YouTube and welcome. Today I'm doing a comparison between three low to mid range phones that you can pick up for 150 quid or less. The Microsoft Lumia 650, the Samsung Galaxy J36 and the Sony Xperia M4 Aqua. Hope you enjoy. Now the Lumia 650 was released in February 2016 whereas the Galaxy J3 was released in November 2015 and the M4 Aqua a bit earlier in March 2015. Now the price, of course, all of them are 150 quid or under. The exact price on Amazon is 174 for the Lumia 650, about 110 for the Samsung J3, and 130 for the M4 Aqua. But of course, you can't find cheaper deals elsewhere or on the old and refurbished sections of Amazon. So for the OS, uh, of course, the Samsung and the Sony use Android, and the Microsoft uses Windows. Now the Xperia M4 Aqua has a fairly big screen and it's pretty thin. It has a 13 megapixel camera which records at 1080p at 30 fps at highest resolution. And for the buttons it has an on off switch on the side which you can easily control with your thumb and volume buttons just underneath. And of course a headphone jack on the top and a charging port on the side. Now this phone is fairly easy to handle, it fits well in the hand and the button is right where your thumb is. The only downside of this layout is that the charging port is on the side which could be an inconvenience to some people. Now one other feature of the Sony is that it has NFC connection which is very useful for sharing files between devices. Now the Samsung J3 is obviously quite a bit smaller than these two but it has quite a nice layout with the volume button on the left, the on off button on the right, a headphone jack on the top and charging port at the bottom. Now the Samsung is quite a lot less aesthetically pleasing than the others because it does feel quite bulky and it's not as slim as the other two phones and also the speaker is on the back which can be very limiting if you put your phone down for example on a surface the sound will be blocked. Now for the speakers on the other two we have speakers on the bottom here and then front facing on the top. The Samsung J36 has has an 8 megapixel 720p 30fps camera on the back, highest resolution. Now the Lumia 650, just like the Samsung J36, has an 8 megapixel camera 720p 30fps maximum resolution with a nice Windows logo at the back and a fairly sleek design as well, just like the Xperia M4 Aqua. Now it has an on-off button on the side and volume button on the top and of course just like the other two it has a headphone jack on the top and it has a charging port at the bottom. Now the Microsoft only has one gigabyte of RAM whereas the other two have two. I don't know if it would make a difference to you depending on what you use it for. Now for the screen size they all have a 5 inch display with a 720 by 1280 pixel resolution. So to make things simple I don't want to bore you with facts and statistics. Basically the appearance of all three phones I would judge that the Sony is about 7 out of 10, the Microsoft 6 out of 10 and the Samsung I'd say 4 because it's quite a bit bulkier and smaller than the other two. Now for the battery life, I'm going to keep this simple, I would say the Microsoft 4 out of 10, the Samsung about 7 out of 10 and the Sony M4 Aqua 6 out of 10. Now this is because the 650 is only 2000 mAh, the Samsung J36 is around 2600 and the M4 Aqua 2400, so you can see the comparisons. Now the Microsoft and Samsung can take nano SIM and dual SIM, while the Sony only takes a nano SIM. So we can already say without turning the phones on that the Microsoft displays the time and date. Now let's turn all three phones on. So straight away you can see the classic design of Windows, Samsung and Xperia. Now if we unlock all these, we'll see that we have a classic Android layout for the Sony and Samsung which would make it very easy to manoeuvre between apps. Now the M4 Aqua feels extremely smooth and sleek and just natural so this is a very good phone if you want it to both look good and feel good. Now the Samsung J36 feels a bit more clicky but it's still very smooth and sleek. Now the Microsoft of course is going to feel quite clicky and blocky because you've got these sections here and the layout is very different to both the Samsung and Sony. Now of course being a Windows operating system you've got the front here with all these tabs for the apps that you choose to put on it and then all the apps down the side and that's all. Now for the Samsung and Sony obviously you've got a home and then extra apps like you would expect. Now for the brightness if you compare all three the J36 is the most bright followed by the M4 Aqua and then I'd say the Microsoft at full brightness. Now if we compare them all at minimum brightness you will see you will you will see you will see that both the Microsoft and Samsung are fairly dim whereas the Sony is slightly brighter which could be a problem if it's got a low range of brightness. Right so here we have when you swipe down on all three phones for the Sony M4 Aqua it's pretty simple you've got these different tabs. Now when you swipe down on all three phones you get now when you swipe down on all three phones you get these layouts. Oh my god. Now when you swipe down on
Now when you swipe down on all three phones, you get these layouts. Now for so for all three phones, when you swipe down, you've got the functions and tabs. Now, if you go on the M4 Aqua, you can just tap easily to switch stuff on and off. Same with the Samsung D36 and similarly with the Microsoft. So all of them are similar in that department. Now for the UI, I'd say I'd give the Samsung and the Sony both a 7 out of 10, but the Microsoft about 4 or 5, because I really don't like the limitations of the UI with the Windows OS on a phone. But that's just me personally. Now, one of the biggest drawbacks of the Microsoft is the very limited range of apps you can get. For example, it doesn't have YouTube or Snapchat or a lot of the really popular apps that people need in their day to day lives. Now, this can be a problem, but there are alternatives for most of them. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But still, if you just want easier access to apps, I'd suggest that you go with Android OS such as the Samsung or Sony. Now of course I haven't compared any other phones that might be more high end like iPhone because I want to give you the best value possible for the cheapest price. Now there are other brands which give fairly decent quality for low prices such as Huawei and HTC. But to be honest the only reason I'm comparing these is because I don't have the best budget and I've actually owned all of these phones once in my lifetime. So I've owned Sony for about three years, the Microsoft for about a week before realizing the very small range of apps and Samsung for about two months now which I also currently use as you can see by the multitude of notifications I've got. So that was pretty much the review. Now for overall if I was to give each of the phones a rating I would give the Samsung an 8 out of 10, the Sony a 7 out of 10 and the Microsoft a 4 out of 10 purely because of the very low range of apps and the limited UI which I really don't like. Now that was a roundup of all three phones, I hope you found this informative. Again, the Samsung is the phone that I currently use and find the best in my opinion. Of course, the Sony would be the runner-up purely because of the very sleek feel and the smooth design and UI and just the premium feel you get when you're using it and swiping through. So there we have it. That was the review, I really hope you enjoyed and if you have any other opinions on these phones or you want me to review something else, then feel free to let me know. I'm always up for new video ideas. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in my next video.